So James I Play Games sent me this video of a of a portal very much like our one but instead of creating geometry to put inside inside the this other world there's actually just a 360 video that that's using some sort of technique to only only show it through the portal and when you step through absolutely show it and he was like hey why don't we why don't we make that for for our portal and so i thought that was a really good idea so um i guess i want to talk a little bit about 360 videos first and i'll send you a link to uh, there's a Unity Unity talk at, at the Unite Europe where they they talked about uh, 360 videos, the video player component in Unity, and I actually gave a really good a really good uh, uh, just over like a yeah overall sort of talk about you know using 360 videos yeah in, in Unity as well, um, which I thought was really useful. So yeah, I'll send a link to that. Um, as well, I want to. I want to like. We need to get our heads around what it means to be a 360 video. Like, like we, we'll look at some of the videos, how they look, and try and make sense of it. And this is the best way I've found of visualizing it. So you look at this map of the world. Uh, you know, maybe not necessarily rectangularly to scale, unless of course you're a flat earther. Total respect for that. Uh, but in in, the, in this case, uh, like look at Antarctica it would be like as big as Africa, which is not the case in real life. The reason why this, this map is accurate is because if you put it on a sphere, you wrapped it around a sphere, all the really high bits would be much smaller because they're all wrapping around those, um, those latitude rings are much shorter in, um, in, their, in their circumference up the top and down the bottom. So that's why this map really does work. And that's really going to help us when we look at, uh, say, for example, here's some. I've downloaded a few videos. You download them just like 360 videos off YouTube. You can download them just like any other regular video, and you'll get something that looks a little bit like this. It's kind of, um, uh, yeah, like like just panned out, very much like this image of Earth, right? This is a Justin Roiland talk at a VR conference. Um, highly highly recommended if you got if you got some time. I might even put a link to that one as well. But yeah, you notice how like on the sides here, it's like a, you know, it looks like some people are facing towards the camera and that sort of thing, you know, and, and that all makes sense once you wrap it onto that sphere. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at how to do that. Um, yeah, in, in our project. So the, the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to disable the park. So all we got is our portal uh, and, our, and our camera. And let's create it. Let's create a new folder and call it uh, call it videos. Just gonna jump into that one. And I've got the here. I've, I've, all right, there's a little little copyright infringement. That's all right. Yeah, uh, educational purposes. I'm pretty sure there's a there's a way around it. All right. So this Saint Motel Happy Accidents video. I really like it. Um, I, I thought it was a really good example of combining combining 3D geometry. Uh, with with uh, just regular film footage, you know, all, all into the one video and the sorts of things that you could do with it. Um, I'll, I'll quickly give you a quick quick little demo, just to show you what what this one is. So it starts off with a black screen or like a sorry an empty empty sort of field, and then as it goes on, but yeah, you can see, you know, like uh, all these uh, all these effects start to come up and. I'll let you watch it yourself uh, to see what happens at the end. It's really cool. Anyway, so now that we've got that, uh, we're just going to create a sphere, just a regular, regular old sphere. I'm going to call this the video sphere. I'm going to reset its transform, make sure it's just at the origin. Uh, for now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make it uh, 10 by 10 by 10. 10 meters. We can play around with that later and, and see what sort of effects we get with a smaller or a larger sphere. And all I need to do here is just add a video component. So I can go here to add add video. Uh, just type in video and add that video player, and then select our clip. And that's actually all we got to do. We can hit play, and it's, and it's going to start running. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute it just so that we're not. Uh, uh, so that we're not we're not listening to it. You know, when you're testing stuff, you keep hearing the same thing. Um, I just wanted to also demonstrate what this looks like on the outside of the sphere. It's not actually how 
360 video is designed. It's meant to be projected on the inside of a sphere, but it kind of still works. Like if this was a, for example, that map of Earth we were looking at, it would all like look correct, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and invert it so it's only going to show on the inside. Uh, we're going to use uh, this concept of uh, culling. You know, you've got your front faces and your back faces. Um, you know, like uh, any, any, any 3D geometry, you usually only want to see the outside of it. So we call those the, the front faces of the geometry. And, um, and by default, we cull the back faces. So I'm going to create a new shader, which is going to do the opposite. It's going to, uh, it's going to show, the, show the inside of the sphere and cull the front faces. It'll look a little, maybe, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll just show you. We're going to create an unlit shader. We'll call that uh, video 360. I try to avoid putting numbers at the front. It's like a, I don't know, maybe it's a programming thing. You know, you get, get in trouble when programming and doing that. Uh, and, and we're really just going to, at first, we'll just add one line of code to get it, to get it, uh, to get it showing properly. And I'm just going to point out that this is a texture shader. So what, what, our, what our video player does is it overrides this texture and puts the uh, whatever current frame of the video in, it feeds that in as the, as the texture for our shader. So I'm just going to put, go, jump in here and just go cull. Uh, by default, it would be like this. So writing that in does nothing because it's just setting it to default. So I'm going to cull the front faces instead. Oh, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it in its own um, in its own little uh, folder as well. Put it in a custom custom folder. Now I'll just, I'll just create a material for that as well. Call it uh, video three hundred and sixty, and I'll just set that set that shader to it. Now, last thing we need to do is just drag our material onto our object. And when we hit play, you'll notice that we don't have that shading anymore to give us the hints of whether it's inside or outside. But these grid lines kind of do, right? Like you can see, can you see in the editor, we've got the grid lines keep going through the front of the sphere all the way to the back. And we've got a, uh, a, a con concave sort of uh, arc going on here. Yeah, so, all right, so that's all working quite nicely, you know, inside here. In fact, I should even be able to move around, rotate, and notice because of the size, it's 10 by 10, I can kind of walk around the uh, walk around the field. Like you might want that effect. It gets a bit strange towards the, towards the outsides, but that's kind of a, uh, uh, yeah, you, <laughs> your creative decision can, can guide how big or small you make the sphere. Now you notice how the words are back to the front. That's because it's mapping uh, the default, you know, mapping to, to the outside of the sphere. We've kind of inverted it by looking from the other side. It's almost looking like if you write something on a write something on a piece of glass and go around to the other side, it would be the other way around. So that's really easy to fix. Uh, we just jump back into our shader, and and down the bottom here, where we're deciding what part of the what part of our UV coordinates to, um, uh, what 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 we're doing here is we're sampling the texture, our main text, with our with our uh, whatever UV coordinates of each, uh, each pixel, and we want to invert that. And the UV coordinates uh, generally go from, from zero to one, and so really easily we can just uh, say one minus the UV coordinates, and that'll be from, from one to zero. So we're gonna create a, we're gonna create a float floor, a uh, float two rather, uh, so this is gonna be our new UV coordinates. It's very much like a, very much like a vector two. Uh, and we're just gonna call it our UV. And that's going to equal float two. This is how we in in um, in HLSL and CG. This is how we how we create a new create a new uh, float or a new a new variable. We say float 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 two um, uh, i dot uv dot x i dot uv dot y. And now doing that and then uh, making sure that we're passing in that uv. I, uh, from from our newly created float, that would be the same as before, right? And that all we're going to do now is just say one dot minus the one dot is just to make sure that we're saying it is a float. You know, good good practices to think about what we're sort of what we're passing in here. Um, yeah, okay. And then we'll jump back into Unity, 
and we'll just wait for some text to come up and we'll see, see how that looks. Uh, you notice how the, the stage keeps appearing to the right? I'm just going to rotate the sphere as well, make sure that it's, it's appearing, uh, you know, the, uh, you know ro rotate it so the stage is in front of the portal. And then we've got our words, our words coming the, uh, the right way around. Okay, so I'll just grab my sphere. I rotate it by negative 90 degrees, I believe. It might be 90, but well, yeah, I'll figure it out. Um, and now let's let's just add that functionality of the stencil test. Uh, now there's two ways we could do it. We could do how we've see how we've been doing this uh, usually is by adding our materials into our portal into our portal script, the materials that we want to change, and changing that property on each of the materials. Now we could keep doing that. The benefit of that is it means that for each material we can edit the mini editor. You know, like um, I'll, I'll just quickly show you. It's worth pointing out. Um, here we go. So I, I'm able to say, oh, I can set this, uh, set my stencil test manually, uh, straight or he straight away on the material. Uh, but maybe we want a simpler way of doing it. If you had like lots of materials, that sort of thing. You don't want to keep changing them every time you've got a new scene. You've got to hook it up again. So we're going to use something called a, a global, a global property, or a glo global variable. Um, that's that's uh, really simple to do. Uh, I'm just I'll pick, bring up an example of how we've been doing it before. So we say we've got our stencil test. You know we're setting it. Uh, uh, whatever whatever we're setting this property to do is what this guy down here gets set. But if I were to edit out that uh, that declaration in the properties now that this stencil test has become a global variable so I'm able to go into my portal and and here where I'm setting all the materials I'm just gonna uh, let's see if I can do this so I've got to uh, comment out all of my uh, my manual material setting and I'm just gonna say shader dot set global int uh, uh, this same name stencil test and I'm gonna pass in uh, this same variable now every 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 shader that uses that variable is going to be it that that variable uh, every sorry every shader that uses that property it's going to be it's going to be uh, it's going to be changed on that shader so in our, in our video 360 shader, instead of adding a property up the top there, we can just go ahead and go straight to our stencil, our stencil, uh, our stencil test. So I can just say stencil ref1 uh, comp uh, stencil test. All right, and, and that'll, be, that'll be all that we need to do. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm also gonna go ahead and, I'm just gonna, for all my other shaders, I'm gonna comment all the other ones out as well. So that they're all kind of working in the same way. Uh, this is just the from the from our park, and there's one more of this this one here. All right, sense of filter. Yep. Okay, that's all of them. So let's go ahead and see how that's working. Hmm. All right, so it hasn't, oh, actually there's one thing I've forgotten, okay, this is really interesting. You see this effect? This is this has got to do, I remember while I've been talking a little bit about render cues and how it's good to be explicit about our render cues because this is what happens when we're not explicit. Uh, it's like, it's like it might be using depth to decide which one gets rendered first, you know, out of the portal and the video because remember our portal needs to render first so that it's, um, uh, it's rendering to that stencil to, to that stencil buffer, and and then our our video will decide based on that whether or not it'll render. And of course, this is where we get this issue because it's like, oh, sometimes the portal is rendering first, sometimes the video is rendering first. So I mean, I might as well do it in play mode. We'll go to our uh, go to our portal window material, and I'm just going to set its render queue to 1999. All right, and now that should that should work more consistently. There we go, and it all, it's all going to change just like how you'd, how you'd regularly expect it. Um, yeah, I, I suppose that's about everything. I, kinda, I really don't mind how it gets all wonky towards the edges. It's kind of interesting. Of course, then you can like pass through it. But yeah, you know, like, yeah, wh whatever you decide, you know, setting the scale of stuff. Um, yeah, I, so I suppose, that's, I suppose that's the basics of a 360 video. Maybe we get some sound going. Oh,
kind of want to play it to the end. It's really good. I'll leave a link to this video and you can watch it fully. It's really nice. Alright.